So, today we are going to start air jet spinning. Let us look at the process steps. The first one is the feed saliva preparation followed by saliva attenuation. The next step is yarn formation and the last step is package formation. So, basically in this machine we have mainly three process steps. The first one feed saliva is actually produced by the previous machines. But what we do in the previous machine to produce a saliva that suits this air jet spinning process also is very important to know. Therefore, we are saying that basically we have four steps that is pre spinning stages where the saliva preparation is quite important and that is followed by the saliva attenuation, actual formation of the yarn and finally, formation of a package. In the saliva preparation, what is important is parallelization of the fibers. It is very important that the fibers should be very, very parallel with respect to each other. And we achieve parallelization by, by on draw frames. So, how many passages to be given on, on draw frame? What should be the draft? These are important. The next is the uniformity of the sliver. That is also very important. And the third important point is cleanliness. That is the saliva should have minimum amount of trash particles and dust. So, these three are the important aspects with respect to saliva preparation. Parallelization of the fibers, the uniformity of the saliva and the cleanliness of the saliva. When it comes to saliva attenuation, it is primarily the drafting operation on the air jet spinning machine. See from saliva we are going to produce a yarn. Therefore, we have to go for a very high amount of draft. And not only that, the drafting speed is also very, very important because the machine is capable to produce at a very, very faster rate. And hence, the drafting should be drafting should be capable to not only provide a very high draft, but also very high speed. So, high draft at high speed is something which is the requirement at the drafting stage. The other thing is that the even though the speed is very high and the draft has to be very high, we have to make sure that drafting irregularity generation is minimum, because that will be reflected in the yarn irregularity. Hence, there is a correlation between the irregularity of the drafted saliva and the irregularity of the yarn, because whatever is the output of drafting operation that is going to remain in the yarn only. And hence, the irregularity generation during drafting operation on the machine is also important. And you will see that other important thing is the spinning triangle should be quite wide. So, why it should be wide that we will discuss as we you know, proceed further through the course. Then comes the yarn formation where the most important thing is false twisting. You have already learned that no earning spinning, there is no false twist, it is all true twist. In the rotor spinning, also, the twisting is primarily a true twist. Whereas, in air jet spinning, the twisting operation 
is a false twisting operation. So therefore, that is what is important here. The other things related to uh, ion formations are the generation of the vortex, which will actually twist the fibers. So, vortex generation is important. The pressures at which the vortex are generated. So, that also we will learn and the other aspects here is pre wrapping of the fibers. Pre wrapping of some fibers, what exactly it is, we will come to know gradually, but these are the things which will be important at the ion formation stage. Then come the last one that is the package formation where winding is the operation that we do and this part you have already learnt while you now discussing about rotor spinning. So, similar you now winding principles are used to produce the package. So, there is nothing much in the at the winding stage. Now, we will discuss about these you now steps one by one, but first of all you should know how a yarn what is the principle of the yarn formations. So, on the right hand side we see there is a schematics of the air jet spun yarn and in this schematic what we see here that the air jet spun yarns are basically fasciated yarns where the core fibers are all parallel and they are wrapped by some other fibers. We are showing the wrapped fiber by the orange color, but the core fibers and the wrapped fibers are the same fibers. It is not that it is a different fiber to using that fiber we are wrapping the core. So, the same fibers are used to produce the wraps and if this is what the structure of the yarn looks like, then what are the tasks to be performed that is listed here is separation of fibers from the drafted strand to create the wrapper fibers, the fibers which will be used or utilized for wrapping the core. So, if I have to use some fibers to wrap the core content, then I have to separate them out from the drafted strand. So, the separation of the fibers, few fibers from the drafted strand has to be accomplished by some means. Then the other thing is I have to create a core fibers which are parallel with respect to each other. So, creation of parallel core fibers following false twisting principle. If I want to create parallel you know, array of fibers by some kind of twisting process, then we have to go for false twisting. So, two twisting will not be able to produce an array of fibers while all the fibers are straight and parallel. And the third one is twisting and wrapping of the free fibers around the core. So, the wrapped fibers, so the fibers which are separated out, they are actually utilized for this purpose. So, part of the fibers from the drafted strands are separated out and they are utilized for twisting and wrapping around the core. This is what has to be done. So, these are the three very important tasks to be performed by the machine. Now, we will try to understand ki how wrapping is can be performed. So, you see a diagram on the 
right hand side. Now, let us imagine that we have a false twisted fiber bundle. So, you can see the twist over there. Now, there is a fiber, a free fiber F, which is lying pretty close to the false twisted bundle of fibers. So, the free fiber is shown by the orange color, an isolated single fiber is shown and it is very, very close, almost say they are resting on the false twisted fiber bundle. Now, before now the, if the, the twisted part gets untwisted, because this false twisted I have said that means, if I allow it to untwist, now what is going to happen? If it is allowed to untwist, all the fibers which are false twisted will be finally, have zero twist in it. And because the free fiber was attached to it, the free fiber will get wrapped or twisted around the core. So, before untwisting, let us say the twist in the free fiber is 0 and false twist in the core fiber is T 1. After untwisting, what will happen? As the fiber bundle is untwisted, the free fiber get twisted in the opposite direction to the false twist. So, twist in the free fibers is going to be minus T 1. Whatever was the false twist in the core, the same amount of torque will be now acting on the free fiber. So, free fiber had 0 twist and when it is the core get untwisted, it get untwisted in the opposite directions. And because of the untwisting action, the twist in the core fibers will be 0, but the free fibers will be twisted in the opposite directions to the original twist that was in the core before it was untwisted. So, this is how we will be able to create a structure where the core fibers are straight and parallel and the free fibers are actually wrapping the core. So, by this means we can say we have a bundle of parallel fibers wrapped by some other fiber. Unfortunately, if we follow this, the free fibers will be very, very loose because both the end of the free fiber will be actually this end and this end. So, this is one number n, this is one and this is two. Both the ends are actually staying on the surface of the yarn. And therefore, this will be basically a kind of loose wrap. There will be hardly any tension on the on the fiber, and therefore the, these kind of wrapper fibers will be able to slide very easily on the core part. At the same time, it will not be able to grip the core fibers tightly because sufficient tension is not going to develop. Since, both the ends of the same fiber are resting on the surface. So, it will lead to very, very, very low yarn strength. So, so what to do? What we can think of to overcome these situations? That is what is will be discussed now that one end of the free fiber it has to be inside the yarn. So, that it remains gripped by the parallel core fibers. So, if we can somehow insert a part of this free fiber inside the yarn, then it remains there tightly even when entire core fibers are uh, untwisted. So, in this case Suppose, by some means, we have been able to put part of the fiber n inside the core fibers. In that case, because even after untwisting, 
the end is going to remain within the bundle of fibers and the rest of the fiber and fi fiber is wrapping as it is shown in the diagram. The fiber will be able to wrap the bundle pretty tightly and tension will develop in the wrapping fibers. Fiber will not be able to slide easily on the on the, on the on the surface of the yarn and this will be able to grip the core bundle of fibers quite tightly because there is a mechanism to generate frictional grip on the trailing end in this case of the free fiber which is inside the yarn core and then it is wrapped. So, this kind of situation we have to create otherwise the yarn will be very very weak. That is something which we need to create that is part of the fiber fibers which are going to finally wrap at least part of the length of the fiber should somehow get inside the yarn. Now, point is whatever we have stated earlier by this mechanism even sufficient wraps are not produced. So, we have to, if we want to increase strength further if the wraps are not sufficient the yarn will be weak. So, air jet yarns in the first generation yarns used to be very very weak. So, therefore, they are not getting accepted in the industry because we yarns are weak and the yarns are weak you have to run the loom at a lesser speed. So, productivity is going to be affected. So, therefore, there are constant you know, effort made by the machine manufacturers to, to enhance the strength. So, one solution to that is the free fibers if it is pre wrapped in the direction opposite to the coat twist direction. That is in this case if you look at the diagram the same free fiber this is the free fiber the orange colored fiber we are suppose by some means I am pre wrapping it. That is the core fibers are twisted and the free fibers in advance they have been wrapped to some extent. Let us say they have been wrapped by to some extent and that twist level is T 2 and in the opposite directions they have been wrapped. Because we know that after wind untwisting all these free fibers are going to receive torque in the opposite directions. So, in advance we wrap them in the opposite directions. In that case, so before untwisting the twist in the free fiber is minus T 2, minus T 2 indicates that it is T 2, but in the opposite direction. So, in the, the core is in the z direction, the, uh, the twist in the wrap, wrapper fibers or free fibers in the s direction. So, the plus or negative or positive sign indicates the sense of twist. Now, after untwisting the twist in the core will be 0 as it is shown here it will be 0 all the twist will be lost and twist in the free fiber T is now going to be minus T 1 plus T 2 because minus T 2 was already there and it will receive another minus T 1 because of untwisting action of the entire bundle at the untwisting stage. And hence we will be able to increase the wrapping intensity and as a result the yarn is going to be stronger because you will be able to generate more wraps wrapping frequency is going to increase. So, that is the way to enhance the strength of the 
LZ line. The other mechanism which was also suggested is that the free fibers may be pre wrapped in the direction similar to the coat twist also. That is they are wrapped, but wrapped to a, to a different degree. If you look at the twist directions, they are similar. The coat fibers and the orange colored fibers, they are inclined in the same sense, but the twist or wrapping twist that you find in the orange colored fiber is much less. So, there is some amount of wrapping could be there. In that case, after untwisting, the twist in the code is going to be 0 and twist in the free fibers is going to be T 1 minus T 3. So, this way also the wrapping will be possible, but the final wrap is going to be less than even if I had the earliest one when we had 0 twist that will still be better in comparison to this. But point is even if I can it gets wrapped in the same direction, but there is a differential amount of twist in the core and the you know, pre wrapped fiber it will still give you a yarn and uh, there will be some wrapping by the free fibers around the core of the uh, of the yarn so this is also possible and uh, the uh, the mechanism of wrapping when it has been uh, researched by many you know many authors researchers they have shown some of them has proposed this that some of the fibers actually remain wrapped initially in the same directions. At the same time, there are some people who have suggested no, they are actually wrapped in the opposite directions. So, point is give whatever the direction are they are wrapped, ultimately there will be some amount of final wrapping on the uh, around the core of the final yarn. The important thing is the frequency of the wraps and how many fibers are participating in wrapping. These two are most important, but that will decide the ultimately the strength of the yarn. And we have to remember that no separate filament or fibers are used to wrap the core part. From the same fibers, part of the fibers are taken out and actually utilized to produce the wraps. So, false twisting is something which is most important in the case of air jet spinning and therefore, we will little bit discuss about the false twist twisting process. Now, the false twisting is suppose we have a yarn held between two clamps C 1 and C 2 and the yarn is there is a bundle of fibers between them and if I there is a twister placed at the middle. Now, initially the yarn had no twist let us say it is filament yarn. So, to start with there was no twist into it. Now, they are gripped at the look at C 1 and C 2 and the twister is placed in between and the twister rotates. If the twister rotates both sides of the twister A and B will be twisted by the same number of turns, but the direction is going to be opposite. So, B side is having S twist, A side will have Z twist. So, this is quite similar one can even do the experiment itself and we can find it out that if I take a length of yarn and put it between the fingers and ask someone to twist at the middle, it will find that the twist directions the two segments are opposite to each other. In a static state, this is what is going to happen. If I 
remove the twister, we will again find that the all the fibers have become parallel to each other because the S and J twist will cancel. So, but now if the situation is like this that we make the yarn move and instead of clamp I have a pair of rollers R 1 and R 2 and the yarn is gripped between these two pair of rollers. There is a twister in between and the yarn is no more static, but it is moving from in this case it is moving from right to left. So, the yarn be held between two roller pairs by the yarn here we means let us say filament yarn not that the you know twisted yarn we put it. As the twister rotates the yarn will also move from left to right. And in this case as twister is has started generating twist the yarn also has started moving from right to left. So, twist will be inserted in the two segments A and B with opposite direction as told in the previous you know, slide. But as soon as the twist from segment A will reach segment B, twist in segment B is going to reduce. Because if A is having let us say in this case Z twist, the moment the twister rotates the section A receives A twist, but section B will receive twist in the S sense. But as the twist is flowing as the showing the twist, but the yarn is flowing the yarn is taking the Z twist along with it into the B part or B segment and there the fibers are twisted in the opposite sense. So, Z and S is going to nullify each other. So, twist in the segment B is going to reduce and equilibrium will be established when we will find that the segment B will have 0 twist. This is what is going to happen finally and therefore, no twist will be finally seen in B. So, we will have a situation where one part will have twist and the other part or other segment of the yarn will have no twist. So, if such a yarn moves out from the system the core part or all the fibers in this case will be showing you no twist at all. So, this is the principle which is actually very much used in the case of air jet spinning and also we will see similar principle is used for vortex spinning as well. Now, we will just go to the working principle just a briefly we will just let you know how the a jet spinning machine is going to work in very simple terms. So, you can see the image on the right hand side that here we have this fiber, then we have the drafting rollers from here to there. Here we have the jet and then we have take up rollers followed by the package formation unit here is the package formation. So, slider is fed to a very high speed and high draft roller drafting unit. So, roller drafting unit we can see here it consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 pair of rollers this is a high drafting system. There are 4 pair of rollers in some machines that could be 5 pair of rollers also, but usually 
four pair of rollers are there and out of that one pair of rollers will be having a prawns. You see here the a prawns. The drafting unit generally consists of four pair of rollers, but as I said in some case it could be five also and it attenuates the sliver by 100 to 200 times. So, the draft range can vary from 100 to 200 or sometimes can go up to 250 also. So, that is the range in which we can keep the draft so that we sliver from sliver to yarn. We will see afterwards we have do, do, uh, you know, we have done some calculation in some other lecture we will discuss about it in more details how much draft is required, but typically the requirement of draft could be anything between 100 to 250 to convert a sliver into a yarn. Obviously, depending upon the count of the yarn and count of sliver, the draft will change. Now, drafted fleece enters a pair of twisting jets. So, jets here are actually two jets are here, one after the other, running at two different air pressure. The two jets, the pressure of air inside the jets are different from each other. Now, the pressurized air is released inside the jet in order to create a vortex and because the vortex is what is going to actually twist the fibers. We release the fibers inside a vortex and vortex is going to actually twist the bundle of fibers and thereby it is going to produce the yarn. The first jet is weaker then the next jet that is jet 2. Two jets are there successively jet 1 and jet 2. What is jet 1? Jet 1 is close to the front roller nib and jet 2 is the next one. Now, the fiber bundle will receive false twist by the vortex created by jet 2. So, jet 2 is usually more powerful. So, the pressurized air, the pressure air pressure is more on jet 2 and jet 2 as a result is more powerful than jet 1. So, jet 2 will twist the bundle of fibers and the vortex could be to the order of 10 lakh rpm that is the speed of the vortex and the twisting rate goes to the order of 2 lakh 50 thousand turns per minute. So, the vortex speed is 10 lakh rpm, but the speed of the fiber bundle is 2 lakh 50 thousand rpm. But that is the no, that means the twisting rate is very, very high. So, the twisting rate in the case of ring spinning is only at the most 20,000 turns per minute, 20,000 rpm. When you go to rotor spinning, it can achieve 100,000 to 120,000 rpm at the most. Here, it is almost double of what is the twisting speed on rotor spinning machines. So, that is the rate at which we can turn the yarn and therefore, we can produce at a very, very faster rate. The twisted bundle of fiber rotates in the form of screw thread because when the, the bundle of fiber is passing through jet 1, jet 2 as it is shown here. The the path of the yarn if you look at this inside, it is not a straight path. The yarn path follows a spiral because balloons are created within because high centrifugal force which will be acting on the yarn, it will cause the yarn to bend and it will create small balloons. 
So, therefore, we are already we are saying that the twisted bundle of fibers will form a screw thread basically means the spiral balloons will be generated. Because J 2 is more powerful that means, J 2 is more powerful than Z 1. The twist runs close to the nip of the front wrapping rollers. So, J 2 vortex is more powerful. So, the twist that the bundle of fiber receives because of the vortex of J 2 that twist will run up to the nip of the front pair of rollers that is somewhere here the twist will move and will cause majority of the fibers to be twisted immediately. The torque will flow like in the ring spinning the torque is generated by the rotation of the balloon which is done by the by the traveler, but that twist flows from balloon zone to the spinning zone that means near the front roller nip. Here also the twist that the fibers receive that torque will flow or the twist will flow right up to the nip of the front pair of rollers and this is going to be very very fast. What happens that when it flows close to the nip of the front pair of rollers some of the fibers from the especially from the edge. So, here is some fibers we call them edge fibers. Edge fibers are also basically what I was initially discussing that is free fibers. The sum of the fibers from the edge of this spinning triangle this is your spinning triangle. From the edges some of the fiber will escape twisting action and that is what is going to help us. So, some of this fiber edge from the edges they will escape twisting action and but they will be moving along in this strand of twisted bundle of fibers and both of them will enter the jet. After entering the jet housing these fibers which are close to the main bundle of twisted fibers is they will get wrapped by the vortex of jet 1. So, as soon as they enter and reach the J 1, J 1 is not very powerful and J 1 is rotating in the opposite directions, this vortex is in the opposite directions, J 1 is not rotating, the vortex within J 1 is rotating in the opposite directions. So, the power of the J 1 being low, it will not be able to do anything to the core bundle of fibers. These bundle of fibers have been twisted by the vortex of J 2. So, the loose fibers which are now resting close to the twisted bundle of fibers, but these fibers cannot penetrate their ends will be wrapped by the vortex of J 1 and that is what will be pre wrapping of the edge fibers or free fibers around the twisted bundle of fibers, first twisted bundle of fibers and then fibers are moving continuously because they are not stationary anywhere and the fibers moves continuously after crossing the jet housing both core and edge fibers will get reverse twisted because J 2 acts as a false twister. So, they will be reverse twisted finally and as a result of rubber twisting majority of the all the all the code fibers we can say will become free from all twist that was imparted previously. So, twist in the main core bundle of fibers will be 0 and the edge fibers which are pre wrapped 
by the vortex of jet 1 will get further wrapping because of because of their connection uh, association with the main bundle of fibers and main bundle of fibers are now rotating in the opposite directions. So, these edge fibers will be now tightly wrapped around the core bundle of fibers and these wrapping will be tight enough which will give the yarn certain amount of strength. So, that they are possible on subsequently on you know, winding machines and also on looms. So, this is how the the yarn is made on the um, uh, air disc spinning machines. So, today we have just discussed the basic principle that we follow to, um, to produce the yarn basically how to generate the edge fibers or free fibers and then how to utilize those free fibers in wrapping the main bundle of fibers in the core. After this we are going to discuss in more details about the uh, about the drafting system and also about the uh, the designs of these two jets and the role that the you know the pressures in the jet is going to play in deciding the structure of the yarn and finally, the structure decides the property of the yarn. So, all those you know, discussions will be held in the future lectures. Thank you.